Hello. Here we continue looking at uh, determinants. There will be a special um, uh, type of matrices, a special operation of matrices, which will be uh, examine, um, compare uh, uh, determinants before and after doing this operation. The operation is of transposition. So I should, shouldn't be using plural here. A transposition is the following. It doesn't um, require matrix to be any special. It could be of arbitrary size say having m columns and m rows. And then in transpose will be of uh, the transpose size. It will have as many rows as the columns of the original matrix and uh, vice versa. So uh, the operation of transposing is just changing uh, rows and columns. Changing the rows. So whatever was the first row now becomes the first column. Whatever was the last row or will be the last column. And everything in between. That is, um, yeah, the easiest example perhaps. Let's take two by three matrix, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's transpose, transpose will be three by two. The first column will be the first row, the original. The second will be the second row, second column. So that is the transpose of, of A. And uh, the first property is, well, if we take Two matrices of the same size, we can compute their sum. The transpose of the sum will be just the sum of transpose, um, transpose uh, summons. That is easy to see. It's just that in the sum, each row is a sum of rows taken from A and B from um, the same positions. And then when we transpose them separately or take the sum, the result is going to be the same. More interesting property is for the product. Imagining two matrices which can be multiplied. Uh, if we multiply them and transpose the result, we can also compute it by taking the transpose of factors, transpose of factors, and then multiplying them in the opposite order. Uh, the change in the order is basically inevitable because if we start with matrices which we can multiply, say, um, L by M and M by N in order to be multiplic multiplicative the dimensions should coincide in the middle. The product of them will be L by M and so should be the result here of the transposing and then the dimensions of the factors after we transpose them will be um, N Uh, sorry, this is M by L for A and uh, N by M for B. Again, uh, this is the only order in which we will be able to multiply uh, transposes of arbitrary factors at all. Uh, we have to have the uh, coincidence for the sizes and that really requires the order to be changed. These two properties, well, the first is really straightforward, but the second one is um, checking it is an interesting exercise, which I recommend doing, but I will not be doing it here today. Instead, what I will be pro proving is the fo following answer for the, transpo for the determinant of the transpose uh, if A is a square matrix, of course. So if A is a square matrix of size N, then the transpose will be the same size square and its determinant will make sense. And the answer for this is what I will try to find, just using the definition, using the formula. And the um, 
um, uh, the exercise is um, worth it because it just you can highlights the structure of the definition. So the determinant of the transpose will be again the sum uh, of um, as many as the permutations of n things, products of matrix entries taken from different rows and different columns. And we could uh, change in uh, matrix entries from A to its transpose, we just change the row and column positions. So before um, uh, we're supposed to have um, something taken from the first, something taken from the second, and so on, of rows. Now they will have to be columns because of the transposing matrix entries of the transpose will be this and they will be sitting in the first row and, and, and the column number sigma 1. But uh, if we immediately write them in terms of matrix entries of A, then that's what we will see. The sign will be the sign of the corresponding permutation. Now, this is not um, immediately related to the um, answer for the determinant of A, but that will be the exercise just to link it with the answer. So instead of um, writing elements in the product like that, uh, fixing the first um, to be from the first column and so on, now I can rearrange them because it's a product, I can write them in any order I like. I could rearrange them by now taking what uh, uh, they should look like according to the formula. So the first factor should be taken from the first row and then its column position, it will be somewhere here in the product, uh, that will be the uh, element where sigma 1 is equal to 1. And the second index will be the inverse permutation applied to 1. And uh, the same for elements sitting in the second row and all the way till the last. So in uh, if we, want, if we want to see which element uh, in this product uh, sits in row number n, we'll have to find uh, sigma um, of something uh, equal to n, and then that something we can find as sigma inverse of n. It becomes uh, looking more like the determinant of A. We have... Um, products of entries sitting in different rows and different columns, uh, as in the term of A, um, but the sign is somewhat uh, different because we're supposed to have the sign of the permutation we are using to arrange our product. Uh, but the property of signs will really um, make it happen for us. The sign of the permutation and of its inverse, uh, these two signs are the same. It's just because the sign of the product of the two is the sign of the trivial permutation of the identity permutation is one. So these two signs have to be opposite, has to be either plus or both minus. And that allows us to change it in the formula, in the computation to the sign of the inverse permutation. Again, we have the product of matrix entries of A arranged uh, in, um, uh, as dictated by the inverse permutation. So finally, final observation, we're taking the product through, through our set of permutations, of all permutations, but then we're computing the inverses. Uh, uh, just to be sure that we have the same answer for the determinant, that will be this answer here. We need to uh, transition from the inverse to the uh, arbitrary permutation. And that is, of course, obvious because inverting is a bijection, is an uh, um, invertible map from permutations to permutations. Bijective uh, is being one-to-one -one and onto is being uh, synonymous to invertible. So this procedure of uh, taking inverse is really just 
reordering whatever permutations we uh, we have in a different way. It's uh, a, a, an invertible map, and so the sum for all permutations, uh, if we, before doing whatever we were supposed to do, before we invert them, will have as many different terms as uh, if we just taken permutations uh, on the nodes without any inversion. So now we can say that uh, arbitrary sigma gives us first the inverse, but now we can call this inverse tau, and then tau will again be arbitrary. So we'll have as many factors as permutations, as many as we uh, summons as permutations. And now finally we see the formula for the determinant of A again. The um, arbitrary permutation symbol is changed, so tau is the same as the inverse of sigma. Sigma was arbitrary permutation before, now we are changing it to a different listing of all the permutations, but the determinant doesn't change. So the sum doesn't change. Uh, all in all, that gives us the uh, useful rule for computing determinants of transpose matri matrices. They're just the same as determinants of the original matrices. Again, of course, it only works for square matrices. Some immediate applications, which will be um, useful somewhat later. So the first, let them, let's imagine that the matrix we have is what is called orthogonal. Uh, that is the property, the following property, that the product of the matrix and its transpose is just the identity. In other way, the transpose matrix is the same as the inverse. And that, um, uh, that uh, uh, property, this orthogonality, is very restrictive when it uh, comes to determinants. So if we look at the determinant of such orthogonal matrix uh, and just use the definition of orthogonality, we will have determinant of A multiplied by determinant of its transpose uh, being by multiplicativity of determinants being the same as the product of A and A transpose, and we know the answer for that product. By definition, it is just the identity matrix, and we know the answer for this determinant, it is 1. But uh, because determinant of transpose is the same as determinant of A, so we'll just have the square of the determinant being 1. This number squared being 1 leaves us with only two possible answers for the determinant, it can be plus or minus one. And that is a really crucial property of orthogonal uh, matrices. They will correspond to certain transformations of vector spaces, and orthogonality will be basically um, equivalent to them being uh, like solid moves of those vector spaces. And then we see two types of such moves. Uh, they are called orientation preserving for plus and orientation reversing for minus, but we will deal with that later. Another example is um, yeah, what is called anti-symmetric. For a matrix, that is the property that the transpose is the same as a negative matrix. In, in this case, the uh, determinant, again, is very, very heavily restricted for a special uh, extra condition uh, that the size is odd. So let's see what we can say about the determinant of odd antisymmetric matrices. If uh, we have this condition, then determinant of A is the same as the determinant of the transpose of A. But we know that the transpose is negative A. Uh, well, when we multiply all matrix entries by negative 1, that's what this is for, uh, we have to then uh, compute in the determinant see this negative sign in every product as many times as the length of the product, as many times as the size. So that gives us the determinant of A back with minus sign to the power of the size. 
And now we have uh, a, a relation between the determinant of a and itself, but with this uh, with the sign because when n is odd, uh, this power is just negative. Uh, so all in all, we have the determinant being the same as its negative version, and of course that is only possible for real numbers when the determinant is zero. So um, we see. Doesn't matter what the matrix looks like, how complicated it is. If it is anti-symmetric, it's uh, n of odd size. Its determinant must be zero. So let's uh, look at uh, examples. Uh, the easiest, perhaps, um, uh, size will be size. Well, if it's uh, sm easiest, will be size one uh, of odd numbers. The smallest will be one. But then uh, the matrix will be just, so the anti-symmetric matrix for size 1 is just a number, but that number should be uh, negative itself, uh, which uh, is the transpose of size 1 matrix, and so this number has to be 0, and that is obviously giving us the answer for the determinant that it is 0. A uh, more interesting example comes when we take the next possible uh, odd size, more interesting examples are possible now. So we have 3 by 3. Uh, to have uh, this property to be anti-symmetric, the diagonal entries will have to be zero because they don't change when we transpose the matrix. Uh, whatever we have above the diagonal, like uh, A, B, C, will have to appear below the diagonal with negative sign. And that is a typical shape of an anti-symmetric matrix, and the answer which we get from this computation is that it's always zero. Of course, you could check it straight away by using the formula and computing the uh, non-zero products and seeing that they really cancel each other. Uh, but uh, for arbitrary odd n, if we have this anti-symmetry for the matrix, we will always have zero. So that is just the result of this computation, of this property and of this computation. That is it.